Welcome to the Picking Nerds. And BZ's frozen like that. And this is a pre-con power-up. And that means that we are taking the Merciless Rage deck and upgrading it with just fifty dollars. Uh, and real quick before we go to the intro, we were doing with whatever whatever she is doing. Or he. I think that was made very clear. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, and that makes us the nitpicking nerds, and we are doing a pre-con power-up, which means we're taking a look at the pre-con, we're going to upgrade all the stuff, and you are going to faithfully subscribe to us because you love us. That means you get to see all of our new content, because we're making a list of every commander that's ever been ranked, ranked, and there's like six videos out now, <laughs> one coming out Friday. So just get your butt over to the subscribe button and we'll click on it. And besides, you want to be subscribed to our channel because our subscribers rage at everything. Disclaimer, the Nitpicky Nerds cannot guarantee that subscribing to our channel will cause you to rage at everything. So who do we choose as the commander of this deck? Well, we went with Angie Falconrath, and for all four of these pre-cons, we just kept the default commander. We thought it worked best. Those were all the ones that worked best with the deck. Uh, the, cl the next closest one is probably Chainer, because he also has a nice way of discarding. But then, like, on the same note of that, if you're putting mana into your discard... Uh, and paying the madness cost on the card you discard, are you really going to be able to pay for a creature to also play from your graveyard? Probably not. So we went with Angie. Now let's just give her a quick little read here. Right, she's a 1-3 for one black red, has haste. She's a legendary vampire. Tap, discard a card, draw a card. Whenever you discard a card, if it had madness, untap her. Notably, it doesn't have to be with her ability. You can discard a card with madness for any reason, and you untap her. Yeah, so... She's just a, she, the, the haste, I like this card a lot. The haste really makes this card cool. It definitely does, because otherwise I feel a little bit sketchy about having to wait that time. Yeah, having to wait to untap with it. Uh, but it's a 1-3, one, one, fine, whatever, that doesn't really matter. The, its ability is just strong. This card draw is good to just have on a creature. On a red-black. Red can struggle with card draw sometimes. It's some good filter. It, definitely and, gets some good and filter. It and if you're discarding madness cards, you're getting card advantage. Agreed. So what's this deck's game plan? Fill the graveyard by discarding cards. Discard madness cards, draw some cards, get some value when you discard, kill a creature here and there. And how do we win? Well, we are going to be reanimating ridiculous threats and taking over the game. And we only had a $50 budget, so I like seeing what kind of threats we came up with for next to nothing price-wise. There's some, there's some cool ones. There's some there? threats that'll just completely run people into the ground and they cost nothing. But first we gotta go, as we do with all these episodes, cut the cards that have nothing to do with the game plan whatsoever. You wanna take turns going over them? Start with Aeon Engine. I don't know why they even printed this card. It's super annoying. It's cute. It's like a wacky card. It, it, it's a cute wacky card that, you would put, that people are gonna put in Chaos decks, but also, so, if one player passes the turn, yep. and he goes one, two, this is the third turn, before he gets a turn, then he reverses the turn order. Why don't you use player four, A, B, C, five. And D? Why don't we use player A, B, C, and D, and you describe what you're talking about? Because that was really confusing. Okay, so player A passes the turn. It now go, uh, player B takes his turn, player C takes his turn, player D is now on his turn. Okay. It's been three turns since player... A. A's turn. Now D activates this silly card. Yep. And now if player C gets a turn and player B gets a turn. He has to wait five turns. Just And that's just it's something that can happen very easily with that card. And there's other things that can be even more annoying with the card. Kind of a feel bad, but more importantly, has nothing to do with madness. Uh, yeah. has nothing to do with anything here, so we're not even going to bother with it. I kind of wanted to go off on that card for yeah, a second. Yeah, we'll talk about it later, maybe in a future video, but it has nothing to do with madness. That's for sure. Archfiend of Spite. So this guy might have madness, but who cares? This card doesn't do anything. The madness cost is pretty expensive too, so you can't keep doing things with Angie, which is what we want to do. Yeah, it's five black black whenever a source in the opponent controls deals damage to Archfiend of Spite, that player source loses that much life unless they sacrifice that many permanents. Not only does it play this weird defensive role where no one's going to attack into you if it's out, mm -hmm. you can flash it in and block something, then they still have a choice. They still have a choice. You, you don't want to give your opponent choices. You really, not with really this kind do of, not. Not with this kind of poop. What else we got? There's Hate Mirage, three and a bread. You create tokens that are copies of two other creatures you don't control. They gain haste. That's not what we want to do. That doesn't, what is that? I don't understand. I don't even understand why the card's in the deck. It's in the gear at deck. And I guess they just wanted to get more of them out there. We cut it from that deck too, so. I mean, it makes, it makes more sense in the gear at deck at least. I mean, yeah. I mean. Not very good. Very expensive for. Uh, Nightmare on Making. Nightmare Making is a weird board wipe. It costs three black black. Exile each creature with power greater than the number of cards in your hand. Or, the other choice is, 
exile creatures with power less than the number of cards in your hand. You can't control this. I mean, you can very, especially in this deck. It's not like this deck is like a large card draw deck. We're trying to reanimate stuff too, so we don't want to get rid of our own guys. That might have eight power. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, the card is the card is probably fine in the right kind of deck. It's commander, it's probably fine. Yeah. Yeah, like I especially don't see any problem with this because it probably won't be very expensive. It'll probably be a decent budget card. That's fair. That's fair. Wildfire Devils is but next. Get it out of the deck. <laughs> Three in red, four two. When it enters, or and at the beginning of your upkeep, choose a player at random. That player exiles an instant or sorcery card from their graveyard. They get to choose. You copy it and you cast it for free. You get a random player's worst instant or sorcery once or right away, and then again on your next turn. I don't even. What does that do? I don't. Okay, this is another card where it's like this is fun and wacky. Why? No, it's not. Why they is took it out? The, it should be random player and a random card from their graveyard. But it's not. They get to choose the worst one, so it's not even fun and wacky. Like. I, I know it's it's annoying because it's just it feels like a miss. It doesn't fit in the deck. Well, it definitely doesn't fit in this deck. That's that's, that's my real issue. With it. Like I can see playing this card. I would like it's the kind of card like I like playing other people's cards in the age, and it's the kind of card I would consider playing. But I just I don't want it in my madness deck. Get it out of my madness deck. Get it out of my madness deck. We have bloodthirsty blade. That thing doesn't go anywhere. Save it for a control deck or some other deck where you want to utilize equipments. Yeah, it's maybe like, you can go or a political deck. This is not that. No synergy. Skyfire Phoenix comes back if you have your commander. It's in your graveyard. I get the synergy there. You can discard it, and then when you cast her, you get it. You get back. But I think it's pretty bad. It doesn't really get you anywhere. Scare Tiller. It's in all of these decks, and it's not good in any of them. It just it, it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit at all. Give me Commander Booster, so I don't have to have Scare Tiller in my Commander Booster product. Classic. Uh, I'll, I'll discard my Scare Tiller because it's bad. <laughs> Perfect synergy. <laughs> Perfect synergy. You get to draw a new card that's not Scare Tiller. <laughs> That is pretty good. At least this deck puts lands in its graveyard. Now, Nixilis, Reignited. We keep saying we don't think this card belongs in what many a miss. decks. What a miss for a reprint. I mean... For any... I mean, almost any other one at random. It's Bad Murder, Bad. Bad Murder, Bad Phyrexian Arena, which is already bad. Bad Murder, Bad Phyrexian Arena, Bad... Planeswalker. <laughs> Honest, <laughs> bad, bad, honestly, yeah. Bad character. <laughs> I actually... You know what? The one from War of the Spark would be better. What is he Whenever an opponent draws a card, they take one, and then you can... Minus two, destroy a creature. Its controller draws two cards. That I like that better. I don't like it better. I do. I, I don't like either of those. You cards. just destroy your own guys. You at least draw more cards. And then Hedonist Trove, which lets you steal somebody's graveyard, but very, very slowly. So slowly, in fact, that it's not worth the mana, or cost, or anything. What does Hedonist Trove do? It exiles their graveyard on basically under it, and you can play lands, and you can play one spell a turn. Whew. I've seen worse cards. Only out of this, get out of this deck. <laughs> yeah. Now we gotta add cards that what? improve the gameplay. That's the thing. Like, yeah, we're gonna add cards to get in the game because all the cards we just went through, even though some of them are cool and interesting, they just don't do anything you want to do in this deck. What's they the make your play experience worse? It's like I don't want. Like, what is Scare Tiller ever doing? In this deck, nothing. It's the closest. It's this is still the closest deck because at least you're discarding lands. Right. At least you can get from there. At least there's like some pseudo synergy, but it's still not good synergy. No, not very great. But we're gonna add cards that improve it, and now we're gonna be happy. Because we got Illusionist Bracers. It's equips to a creature, and when you activate an ability, you copy it of the equipped creature. And hey, discard a card is the cost. So we're not copying discarding a card. We're drawing two. This this actually, depending on how many madness cards, you could draw like profit like ten cards. Oh yeah. Wow, I wasn't even thinking about that. that like... Yeah, this gets crazy. Yeah, because I was, I was for some reason I was thinking there's a mana cost on tapping it. There's not. It's just the tap. If you, so, so that's why we had to get rid of all those cards that had bad. They either had one had madness and the rest were just bad. Yeah, the rest were just completely horrible. And then fit in the deck. Uh, Faithless looting. How? <laughs> Faithless looting belongs in the madness deck. Faithless looting is a messed up card. It's and such a is good. One of the reasons it's so good. Faithless looting is just a good magic card. Definitely. Like it's. it's... Whoa. We both stopped at the same time. The late should I go up? Oh, Faithless Link is just super strong. I mean, one mana to draw two, discard two is fine, but then it also has flashback. In a, in a deck where you want to, you're going to be discarding cards, putting a flashback card in your graveyard is very helpful. It holds up so well in the age. It's, it's very good. You're going to be impressed with it all the time. Super synergistic. Lets you cast your madness cards. Same with Cathartic Reunion. Yeah, Cathartic Reunion is a one red, discard one and a red, discard two cards, uh, draw, three. draw three. So you get the exact, it's, it's card selection. But also, when you're discarding madness, it becomes card advantage. For for the record, discard two madness cards, cast both of them, draw three. That's like draw five cards. That's a ton of card advantage. That's ridiculous. Yeah. 
you really... It's not kind of actually good. Let alone if, when you discard Manus cards, you're untapping Angie as well. And then you're just going crazy. Oh, it's whenever you discard. Oh my god, yeah, these, other cards, these other cards trigger too. I wasn't even thinking about that. This deck is very sweet. That's why I said I, I like this deck as my favorite after the Naya Tokens deck. As like the most cohesive, like well-built thing. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's close. It just had a lot of stupid stuff in it. <laughs> we added Anger, Angry Baby, because it's perfect to discard. You give all your creatures haste. When you reanimate a big thing, well, that's what you'll see. You can smash with it right away. Voldaren Pariah, that's a really good card. You sacrifice three creatures, and then it transforms into a 6-5 flyer, and then target opponent has sacrificed three creatures. So you're basically board wiping somebody, and it has madness for three. It's also uh, cool, because on the flip side, it's an Eldrazi zombie. It's an Eldrazi vampire. No, I meant vampire. Eldrazi vampire. Uh, it's the only one in existence, I believe. It's a very cheap madness cost, though, for a pretty good effect. What's that madness cost? Black, black, black. Ooh. ooh. Triple black costs the same as Necropotence. <laughs> Don't compare <laughs> things to Necropotence. You'll, be, you'll end up be feeling sad about the thing you started with. Oh, right. wow, is there a discard thing to this deck? Because how about Archfiend Ifnir? How about just plate winning your opponents? Get rid Remember that other five mana thing? No, 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 no. This is the five mana board wipe. Yeah, it's so much better. He is three black black for a five four. Flyer. Uh, he also he's, he has pay two cycle him. Yep, that's and, already sweet. Which, yeah, because if he's just, whatever, if he's there, you can just get rid of him. Whenever you cycle or discard a card, put a negative one, negative one counter on each creature your opponent's control. Each one, and it's a counter. Yeah. And you can even do weird stuff like if you want to reanimate it, but you don't have the mana, you cycle it and then reanimate it instead of just playing it. Oh, that's fair. And I you save you save a couple a couple mana on that. Save a couple bucks. <laughs> like us when we made this deck. <laughs> Phyrexian Reclamation, one mana for an enchantment. You pay one and a black, pay two life, return target creature from your graveyard to your hand. If that creature has madness, it's pay two draw card. Pay two and two life draw card. In addition to Recurring any creature you need at any moment. Yeah, putting things with madness back into your hand works out really well. And even if you just hurt something in the early game and then you draw this later, get it back. Yeah, you have the no mana for your reanimation targets, get them back from the graveyard and just cast them hard cast. Yeah, these are the kind of synergies that we want to see more of in these kind of decks that we don't see. We have Glithorn Buccaneer next. It's a 2 4 for 3. Whenever you discard a card, it deals 1 to each opponent. We're going to be doing that a lot. Do we discard cards in this deck? Yes. Oh, I forgot. It has other text on it, but that's basically the meat and potatoes of it. Perpetual <laughs> Timepiece. Love this card. We're trying to get stuff into our graveyard. So you tap it to mill two or pay two if you want to shuffle your madness cards back in because you're getting low on steam, but you're drawing cards and discarding and dealing damage to people. Let you do that too. I mean, you don't even, like, you can just put cards back in. Like, Any also, number. Like, you don't have to put the bad like, ones back in. You're also getting low on cards in your library. Like, your opponents are going to, like, Pajuka Bog, like, 60 cards. It happened, it's happened before. That's right? definitely felt. It feels horrible, but that, when you have timepiece, they just can't. They, yeah, they would you about you and you go, okay, I'll put the ones I want back in my deck. Yeah, I'll be sure to draw them again. Uh, Cavalier of Flam. Flame? Yeah. Flam? A flam. Is that like fake flames? <laughs> yeah. Like spam? Yeah, flam. Uh, We're going to open up a can of flam on our opponents. You want to read this one? Two. Red, red, red for an elemental knight. Six, five. Those are there's some pretty decent stats, but I'll keep reading it because there's probably more text in this card. Uh, one, red. Creatures you control get plus one, plus O, oh, and gain haste until end of turn. So it, it gives haste to our creatures. If, including itself. In, including itself. I, wow, I didn't even think about that. I kind of for, I forget that because it's weirdly... Since so there's no room it, on the card, there's like a hundred words on this thing. Whenever he enters the battlefield, you may discard any number of cards, then draw that many cards. Interesting. It's almost like draw discard is some sort of theme in this deck. Or discard draw. Oh, but if only this thing was a win con also. <laughs> when Cavalier Flame dies, it deals X damage to each opponent and each Planeswalker they control where X is the number of land cards in your graveyard. You can keep doing this over and over when you start reanimating. <laughs> this gets nasty because you can easily put 10, 15 lands in your graveyard. Yeah, you don't, have to, you don't have to exile this one. This card is sweet. This card is sweet. I mean, the art is also very good on this card, on top well, of we, that. We did use it for our thumbnail. Yeah, we did, because it's super cool. It's great art, and a card just, you're, it says discard. It says draw. It deals damage when it dies. It, deals, it comes back and does more discard, and then deals more damage when it dies the next time. Is that good? Uh, yes, the answer is yes. Oh, I didn't know. All right, we got a couple more. Stink Nymph, it's got dredge five. You put it in your graveyard with Madness, or with your Angie, Dredge five later if you want more cards in the graveyard, or you don't have to dredge it. It's up to you. It's also it's sometimes just a decent blocker, it's a death touch blocker. Sure, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't have a problem with this guy. You can instant speed dredge five two with Angie. It's true, yeah. I've... You go 
discard Stink Weed Up, Drudge 5. Goes back in your hand. <laughs> That's true. So you just... Basically so... tap Angie to mill 5. <laughs> This gives you some versatility. Yeah, yeah it's in your graveyard. Tap NG draw five or mill five. Mill five. That's weird. I mean, that gets great when you want to set up your kills with Cavaliers and want to find a reanimation target. Other ways to find reanimation targets: buried alive. What does that card do? Uh, buried alive puts three creatures from your deck into your graveyard. Perfect. Mm -hmm. You can grab a stink weed up. You can grab a reanimation target. You can grab a friggin' who cares? You don't have to grab three. Get a who cares? <laughs> Classic who cares? All right. And the last card that we're adding, Sha well, the last card that fits this game plan very well. That we're talking about in this category. Shadow of the Grave. One in a black for an instant, you return to your hand all cards that were discarded this turn. This can get you like stupid card advantage. If you like tap NG three or four times. Oh yeah, and then you just play this. Or you could you draw into it. Like, yeah, okay, do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make that any funnier than it was, so I won't try. What's the next category? I've been talking too much. Uh, we're gonna <laughs> You do, you yeah, no. You cause you're the you're the card guy as you're the card said. guy. You're the card guy. So when we go into more cards, then I'm going to start the category with improving existing cards. So this is taking cards that they put in the deck and make, in moving them to better versions of the same thing, right? essentially. So these first ones are some reanimation spells that they have. Yes. Uh, Beacon of Unrest is a five mana reanimate and it shuffles back in afterward. Uh, we cut that. Champion of Stray Souls. Sacrifice a bunch of creatures to get a bunch of creatures back. It's a bajillion mana. That's too much mana. Uh, Boneyard Parlay. You factor fiction a graveyard, and then they give you the worst creatures in that graveyard for seven. That, that's, ugh. No thanks. What do we put instead? Uh, we have Dread Return, which is two black black, uh, return terror creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. Perfect. Flashback, sacrifice three creatures, return terror creature from the graveyard to the battlefield. Awesome. It does something in the graveyard if we discard it early. It does something in our hand. It gets our reanimation creatures back. Exactly. I these are, this is what you want. These are the kind of cool cards that should have been in the deck already. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, stitch together. Black, black. If you have threshold, reanimate something. Otherwise, return it to your hand. So this is perfect. Unearth. I love this card because it has a cycling. It gets back your early utility creatures like Burnished Heart for one minute. Burnished Heart. Animate Dead is... Uh, so the only... Th okay. Animate Dead is worded way worse than what I'm going to say. Yes. So Animate Dead is one black enchantment. Uh, it rean and it. Reanimates a creature from your graveyard and has minus one, minus all. Right, and then if an enemy dead leaves, the creature leaves. Yeah. Finally, last way we're getting things back, Phyrexian Delver. Reanimates something, literally. It's the card reanimate. You lose life, you go to its mana cost, it comes back. Yeah, it's, it's a creature for three black black. The card's perfectly fine. Here's some reanimation targets that we changed. Uh, we got rid of Meteor Golem from this deck. Uh, Meteor Golem is just, he's so whatever. No. <laughs> it's so medium. He reminds me, he's like a bigger... Medium Golem. He's a bigger uh, Acidic Slime, which I think is super overrated. Acidic Slime is overrated. And I think he's a bigger version of it, because he, he, he just, but you, he, they had a creature onto him. Yeah. It's, How much better is that? It's not. It's not much better. Yeah, that's actually fair. Uh, Overseer of the Damned. Too expensive, not worth it, really bad, makes zombies. <laughs> Flayer of the Hate Bond? Okay. We have to talk about this one for one second, because it's, okay. It's whenever a creature enters from the graveyard to the battlefield. Yes you uh, deal damage equal to its power. Mm -hmm. So the real question is... What's going on? What's going on? Is, Are we missing something? The reanimation theme was very light in this deck, and he doesn't. He only fits with the reanimation theme. Was he intended to be for the chainer side of the deck? Maybe. If you discard a creature with madness, it goes into exile. It doesn't go into the graveyard. No, and it goes onto the stack from there. Yeah, that's really weird. Yeah. I, so maybe it is for the trainer half. We might have figured it out that way. If someone has a better excuse, let us know. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just not that good. Uh, so we added, who Villas Broker of Blood. Uh, he is a he's a strong card. He's really, really big. He's an 8-8 for 8 mana. Whenever you lose life, draw cards equal to the amount of life lost this, this way. I don't know if it says this way, but it says lost. It just says draw that many. It's, oh, it just says draw that many? Yep. Yeah, I mean, I just wasn't sure I was I know exactly what the card does. This wasn't sure it was. This card is just insane. I mean, this is something that when you reanimate it, it's just like... Game over, because it also, oh, there's another line of text in this card, I forgot. Play a black and two life, Terror Creature gets negative one, negative one. Oh wait, that means you draw two cards as well, every single time. Uh, amazing. This card is so good, it's a gumball, it's 50 cents. It's a gumball? Yeah, that's what Commander's Brew likes to say. Oh, you still do the thing? They call it a gumball. They're gonna, they're coming for us now. Fine, they'll finally recognize that we exist. <laughs> all right, what else we got? Because I know you know what all these do. Uh, Sepulchral 
Is that, is that how you say that? Good enough for me. Sepulchral Primordial. Uh, he is a big old fatty for seven mana, and when he enters the battlefield, you reanimate a creature from everyone's gra every opponent's graveyard. This card is so annoying, and it's very powerful. I love it. I really, really love this card. Who else? I played it a lot. Uh, Sire of Insanity. Uh, at the beginning of each end step, each player discards their hand. <laughs> this will just wreck everybody who's not playing reanimation. Yeah, not playing reanimation and not playing any... Like, you're playing Madness even. It can work with the Madness. Yeah. Because, like, <laughs> It's so good. Uh, Inferno Titan. I mean, this is just a good card. I mean, it's, it's part of the Titan cycle. You know what it does. If it's you good don't... to play. It's good to reanimate. We can move on. It yeah. kills creatures very easily. Uh, so, better ways of this card. We cut Zombie Investation. Discard 2 Mega Zombie. Not efficient enough. Grimoire of the Dead, I think, is completely horrible. And we added Trading Post and Rotting Rats. Rotting Rats is cool because it has Unearth. So you can bring it back and it messes with everybody a little bit. Makes them all discard a card. Kind of puts a strain on their hand. It de definitely gets you card advantage. Uh, I've played against Rotting Rats in Modern. Trading Post. <laughs> I actually added Trading Post as the last card I added because I was realizing, okay, well, there's so many ways to make us lose life. And we got to get this life back so we can keep going off with Villas and whatnot. This tap, discard a card, gain four life. That's not bad. So yeah. You're discarding cards of Madness. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Um, and it works really well in this deck. You can also do things like make goats with this yeah, character. It's kind of just like an engine. I think it's really sweet. It's a really weird character. It works in... Make goats so that you can flashback um, Dread Return. <laughs> I'm so, down. I like the idea of like... Uh, you're, you're reanimating Villas by sacrificing three goats to him. <laughs> so he's like, I'm back, baby. That feels pretty flavorful, <laughs> sacrificing goats for a demon. Yeah, it does. Hey, if you reanimate him with Frexian Delver, do you draw eight cards? So that's a cute little combo. Uh, Draw eight cards just for getting them out? Yeah, and it works with Reanimate, which isn't in this deck because it was too expensive for yeah, the budget. Yeah, if you get the budget for it, play Reanimate. Yeah, Reanimate him, draw eight cards when he comes into play. That's Pretty. absurd. That's like a, that anti-card, what is it, Contract from Below? <laughs> Except you just draw eight. So I guess it's not. <laughs> contract. Finally, finally, we gotta move on. The lands. Uh, what do we cut? Uh, we cut four ETB tap lands. I'm getting sick of these. They're so, why do we just... How, what, like I can probably list them all if I wanted to, but I'm not going but to. We're not gonna. Because I don't care about any of them. Cut Rakdos Carnarium. We don't like slow tap lands. We're gonna, trust us, we're about to fix your mana. And we cut six basics because we're diversifying the lands. I think this we're making it better. 20 basics. Yes. We added Canyon Slough. It has cycling. Perfect. We have a discard sub theme. Dragon Skull Summit. Amazing duel. Just gonna do, do good work for you. Foreboding Ruins. Actually, super cheap. Almost always enters untapped. There's like a thousand mountains and swamps in here. Smoldering Marsh, great. Molten Slag Heap. I like it because you can charge it up. Uh, Desert of the Fervent and Desert of the Glorified. More cycling lands. I mean, so cycling something? Cycling something. I mean, there's there's just lots of things that work with discarding, which makes so much sense when your commander says discard a card, draw a card. Yeah, and when you're playing so many lands, it helps you stop, mitigate flood too. So our budget was $50 because it was for every one of these commander precons. Uh, we spent $48.62. Try to use as much as possible. And we did. So that you could take $100, go to your local game store, buy the pre-con, buy all these cards, and end up with a 65% deck. We that's, that's what we've been calling Although it. this one's feeling more like 75%. There's some strong stuff in here. Yeah, but I think it'd be 75% when you get like the reanimate and stuff in here. That's one Maybe. Be, Just a little bit slow. I mean, we have animate dead. That's like the next best one after reanimate. Yeah, it is. So. I mean, the reanimate's so good. Original CMC. Oh my god. 4.06. New CMC. <laughs> 3.48, brought it back down to only a little clunky. 38 changes, the most of any deck. Yeah, I didn't need the most changes of any deck, to a be A lot fair. of that was the lands, honestly. I mean, the mana base was stop rough. building bad mana bases in your pre-cons. Come on, you can't give us Dragon Skull Summit in a pre-con? What? That's that, like $3. Well, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't say so that it. was this pre-con upgrade, power up, you know the drill. We want to thank our 21 patrons. If we get to 25 patrons, we're going to do an Ask Me Anything on a podcast. Get taking questions from the patrons. Yes, so that'll be awesome. It'll be super fun to do once we get there. Uh, if you want to support us and be one of those next four patrons, you can go to patreon.com forward slash user forward slash into picking nerds. For the record, we're taking more than four. We won't stop after 25. We'll get a new cool goal. Cool, cool goal. A new cool goal. I thought you said, I thought you were trying to say quota and then stop because you thought that wasn't right. Nope. Uh, so you guys are all awesome. We love you all as much as we can without making you uncomfortable. And peace out, Tribe Scout.